Tutorial 6 Variables and Flow Control Part 2 Most flow control actions fall into one of two categories loops or conditions. Loops enable running a series of actions more than once without needing to make copies of them. This is useful, for example, if you want to create 20 falling rocks without duplicating the rock creation logic. Otherwise, the rock create object action would have to be duplicated 20 times to create this effect. The second flow control actions category, conditions, are sort of mini events. As you may remember, I refer to events as when questions. A collision event is when two objects collide. A create event is when an object is created, and so on. Conditions help us refine the when question and create more logic flow. We will use our current game to demonstrate the usefulness of this. Just before I start babbling about condition actions, we wanted to add logic that will manage the number of attempts players are allowed with their hero fish, or in other words, number of lives. So far, we added a variable that keeps track of every time an animated fish is created, but nowhere did we make use of this information. Currently, the action and number of sprites event take care of creating a new fish each time it is destroyed. Instead, we would like to make the fish reappear only three times, or when the player's lives run out. For that purpose, we will use the IF action. The if action dialog contains a single text box for input. This is where we will place our condition. Conditions are very similar to the expression that we were introduced to in the previous tutorial. Just like in expressions, we can use numbers, arithmetic operators, and built-in properties. The only difference between the two is the way they are evaluated. Expressions are used for calculations and return a numeric value. For example, 1, 2, and 500,000. All these are valid end results of an expression. Conditions, on the other hand, return a Boolean value, either true or false. To achieve this, all conditions must contain a comparing operator. Writing this condition in the text box results in a valid condition that checks if 1 is greater than 3. Naturally, this will always be false and is not very interesting. This condition will compare 1 to 1 and will always be true. Take note that we duplicated the equals sign to make it valid in the expression. 1 is not enough. So far, the conditions have not been of much interest. They always evaluate to the same value and are not affected by anything. For purposes of our game, we would like to write a condition that will check if the number of created fish is either equal to or smaller than 3. This will mean we have yet to create 4 hero fish, and the player still deserves another chance. We press Control plus Space to use the autocomplete feature that was introduced to us in a previous tutorial. Notice that our global variable, fish count, appears in the list. Here, we select it and type the rest of the condition. As you can see, I've used a combined comparing operator which simply means the condition will be true if the fish count is equal to or less than 3. Very good. We have our condition. But as you can see, an error was added. The if action and most other flow control actions are containing actions. This simply means they may contain actions inside them. In the if condition case, this is even mandatory. Simply placing the action doesn't do much good, 
because the only actions affected by it are the ones that it contains. We'll select the Create action using the mouse and move it into the If Conditions node. Actions can also be reordered using the Control key and arrow keys. Let's run the game. Here, I'll collide with an enemy. Again. Again. And again. As you can see, our beloved fish is gone. This is still not good enough, because enemies are still being created and the game plays on as if nothing has happened. This is exactly why we have the end game action. Let's leave the default settings and run our game once more. No, this is not what we wanted. The game is ended, meaning our end game action was called. Let's check why that happened. I know why this happened. As you can see, the end game action will be executed every time the event is triggered. To fix this, let's use another flow control action, the else action, and reposition the end game action within it. Else actions can only be positioned immediately after if actions and enable us to act when a condition is false, without writing another condition. In our case, this means that when a collision occurs with an enemy fish, the fish count variable is compared to 3. Should the value be lesser or equal, a new fish is created. Otherwise, the game will end. I would like to stress that the two actions will never execute within the same collision. Either the action containing the if is executed, or the action containing the else is executed, but never both. Let's run our game again. Here, I'll collide with an enemy. Again. Again. And again. Very good. Game over is displayed as expected. While not being of much interest when testing the game in the simulator, it is very important to place the end game action in all ending situations in our game. When encountered in the final version of the game, the about and high score screens may be displayed and the player will be sent back to the game's main menu. Let's save the game as MoFish5. This ends today's lesson. In our next tutorial, we will learn to take advantage of the last object type, the capability.